to Miss Carly Weber from Prince George, British Columbia. Carly. Thank you, Jim. St. Therese has been a great blessing in my life. I've come to understand that being childlike is what is in our true identity as sons and daughters of Christ. I am created to have an eternal relationship with Christ. He's my bridegroom. This ultimately has changed my understanding and my relationship with him. Throughout the school year, God has worked in my heart to bulldoze away some of the sand or the lies to lay a solid rock foundation to stand on. I am grateful for the little way of St. Therese because it has shown me the love of Christ in all things. St. Therese has shown me the sacredness and the value of the little things, the little duties, and the little sacrifices in my life and to hold all things loosely in front of him. I am not called to be perfect. This has become one of the truths that has greatly challenged me, but I'm called to love. As St. Therese says, my vocation is to love. I've gained lots of knowledge and growth through this, that statement, especially to the staff and the students here at St. Therese, who have challenged me to go deeper, reach higher, laugh and love without counting the cost. I have been exceptionally blessed and eternally granted so much joy here in so many ways. So thank you very much. <laughs> I would now like to introduce Dale Albers from Lloyd Minster, Alberta to give his testimony. My year at St. Therese has definitely been one of the most packed, life-giving and joyous years of my life. This time here has been an amazing opportunity for me to encounter God in the everyday and the ordinary. Before coming to St. Therese, I did not know what this place was or what it, what it offers here, but through God's providence, I was led to become a student here and am definitely very grateful for this opportunity. While here, I have no, come not only to know my own biological siblings better, Kelly and Rebecca are kind of back here, you'll meet them later. <laughs> but also to grow in a much larger community of brothers and sisters who love each and every person just as we are. The biggest blessing for me this year has been the growth of knowledge and love of myself. I have come to know that God loves me personally and that I have been made in his image and likeness. Through being rooted in Christ, I have no need to fear, for he is constantly sustaining and strengthening me. I am loved and not alone. He is always with me. Truly, this year has brought tremendous freedom, joy, peace, meaning, and purpose. Moreover, I have come to a deeper knowledge of who I am as a man and my role in sharing Christ with the world. I am no longer afraid of witnessing to others and being the man that I am called to be. This once paralyzing fear is no more, for although I am weak, it is in these moments that I have to show my trust in God the most. This year has taught me so much and has been such an amazingly awesome challenging yet beautiful journey with 30 of the best young people that have blessed and encouraged me to grow. What a grace this year has been for me and I will tr tr cherish this tremendous experience. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Kenda Trism from Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. Good evening. In my second year at St. Therese, God has worked with gentleness and strength to move me from a place of analyzing and observing him from a distance to relating to him intimately and knowing him more personally. I've come to a deeper appreciation of the beauty and mystery that he is by braving an intense pilgrimage from my head to my heart where my deepest desires lie. Throughout my life, I've suppressed many of my desires and fear that my wants and needs would not be met and I rejected my longing to be loved, to be known, to be seen as beautiful. And when feelings rose in me, I did my best to silence them and put them to sleep. But Jesus has shown me that he genuinely longs to fulfill them in ways far beyond my imagining. It is as if God has been waking me up from a deep sleep and rousing me to a greater awareness of the wonder that he truly is and of the fullness of life which he calls me to. Instead of being trapped in my self-willed isolation, fear and anxiety, he's taught me how to be humble, 
little and a child, and to surrender to my father's love completely, to walk with him in freedom, trusting that he will provide for me in every way, even and especially when things aren't exactly going according to my plans. I'm excited to continue on my journey with God, becoming more fully alive and passionately pursuing love in the small and ordinary moments of daily life. And I'll be returning to Dalhousie University to finish my degree in biology in the fall in the study of life. Um, and I'll be looking forward to seeing where God takes me from there. This year has been an absolute joy and a blessing and I wish my incredible and beautiful classmates all the best and I look forward to when our paths will cross again. Thank you. And I would like to introduce my sister, Shelby Bailey, from Battleford, Saskatchewan. I apologize, I should have gone to the stage there actually earlier. But for the sake of expedience, because we do have a wonderful group to get through, maybe we could hold our applause until the end, then we can make up for it, okay? Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Through St. Therese, God has given me a lot over the nine months that I've been here. One gem I would like to share with you tonight is a story that Jim has shared with us. During orientation, Jim told us a story about a wise and foolish builder. He believes that both of the men from this parable in the Gospels built in the same area, yet one built on sand and the other on stone. What was the difference, he asked us. The foolish man went straight to building his house and it collapsed. The wise man took time to clear away the sand. It would have taken time, patience, hard work, integrity, determination, and a conviction that what he was doing was worth it. He would have had to remove everything down to the bedrock. Then he would be able to build a structure solid and strong. This year has been for me time to clear away the sand in my own life. It has taken time, patience, hard work, integrity, determination, and a conviction that what I'm doing is worth it. And it most certainly has been. I have spent this year preparing the foundation upon which I will live the rest of my life. Clearing away sand, I laid and found foundation stones of surrendering to God, a heart in union with Christ, a life lived in the spirit, a communion of faith life, a sense of joy and of gratitude, hospitality and of charity, all lived in humility and simplicity and trust and confidence. Upon this foundation, I shall be able to live the rest of my life. I thank God that he's blessed me with the opportunity to attend St. Therese, to learn, to grow, and to love. This has been the greatest year of my life, and people may tell me that I'm still young and that I shouldn't be measuring my whole life by one year, but I will. This year, this commissioning, this year and this commissioning is not an end for me, but this is the beginning of the rest of my life. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Anise Perot from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Throughout the year at St. Therese, I learned the truth about myself, my identity as a daughter of God, and who God really is. The Lord gently revealed to me the lies that I had been believing about myself and gave me the perseverance to overcome them. This gave me a great liberation in being closer to who God created me to be and a great peace to go along with that. He also showed me that he is a merciful God and slowly taught me how to trust in his mercy. Through the example of St. Therese and her little way of love, I learned the beauty of living a small, hidden, and simple life and slowly began to accept that God treasures our littleness. At first, I struggled with being little, seeing it as a burden rather than a gift, partly due to society's emphasis on our worth measured by productivity. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. This year, I began to truly embrace the gift of being small and understand that we are all called to such smallness. I've established a deep trust in God and his immense love for me and everyone else over the past nine months, and I, lo I look forward to continuing this journey of growth. I know that the journey isn't done here, but is rather beginning, and I will keep discovering more about who I am created to be and what our Lord's plans are for me. Thank you. Now I'd now like to introduce Joseph Wackeltz from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Thank you, Anna.
coming to St. Therese this year, I was looking to strengthen my relationship with Jesus. Another part that I was really concerned about was my discipline. Because before coming, I was and still am, still swayed by my emotion wherever, wherever it pushed me if I felt like doing this or felt like doing that. Um, when I got here quickly, I recognized that I was going to receive a lot of discipline. <laughs> But I realize that it's in the discipline of the small things, in doing small things with great love, that that's how it would change my entire approach to my life. Simply doing a chore can be giving life if we do it with great love. Not simply because you do the chore well, but because you're practicing love. At some points in the year, I would find myself just simply cruising through homework, doing chores like nobody's business, <laughs> but normally it would take me forever and I would be like well I don't feel like doing a chore right now so I would sit down and do whatever I felt like doing at that time so I was, I was fighting the chores in, in a sense I would still have to do them but I was just procrastinating I guess and so this extended to my relationship with Jesus so I was more and more integrated into my life with Jesus. And this brought me to all these beautiful people which I was more and more able to love. But I'm far from perfect. But I'm more able to cooperate with God in my own inner healing journey than ever before. I will be better able to work with the Spirit in helping to bring more life to all those who surround me and who bless me in the time I spend with them. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to present to you Vanessa Wilson from Tabor, Alberta. Over the past two years, I have rediscovered the joy of living. These past nine months have brought healing to my past that I never thought was possible. The path hasn't always been easy to travel but that is because of my own stubbornness and hardness of heart. God has been very patient with me, including using my first year here to allow me to learn how to trust again. The healing process has also been a very gentle one, so gentle that at times I thought nothing was happening. But now, looking over my shoulder, I see the path I've walked here at St. Therese. I see the growth. I see the change in myself. I've rediscovered joy, my self-worth, and I've, been a, and I've been set free, from, free to live a life that I was created for. I'd like to introduce to you Stephen Anderson from Bruno, Saskatchewan. When I arrived at St. Therese, I had no idea what a fantastic program I was beginning, or that I would have a group of such extraordinary men and women to journey and grow with. I learned more about myself and about my faith in the first month here than I had ever known in my life before. I learned to do the duty of the moment in all things, or as Father Ivan once said, do what is in your face. <laughs> I'll always be able to look back at the teachings that were given here and count on them to help me on the right, to help keep me on the right path for the rest of my life. It's a unique experience to be able to completely trust in what you are learning and the teachers that you have to always tell you exactly what you need to know. The St. Therese staff and information team were a big part of the growth and healing that I received this year, and I will never forget it. They've impacted my life in a way that I will never forget, and I will, and I'm a better person for having known them. Finally, I would like to thank my brothers and sisters, who have been my fellow classmates and my friends for the last nine months of this amazing journey. They never gave up on me, and they have definitely shown the high quality of their friendship through their trust and their love. I consider myself very fortunate to count myself among their friends and their brother. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Joseph Hudick from Fox Valley. Can't really read upside down anymore. I used to be able to, then I was introduced to sitting on the couch. Hello, all. I returned for yet another year, much to my own surprise as well as others. 
Um, I really wasn't planning on coming back for a second year at the end of last year, but if it weren't for my good friends, Jim, and wherever Robert is, uh, there he is. <laughs> uh, if, that, if it hadn't been for them sitting me down in Jim's office and saying, we want you to apply for the second year this fall, I would, probably wouldn't be here right now to have an awesome experience with all these people behind me. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, these people, these amazing people, who through a, a bit of a fault of their own, um, have brought many blessings and healing to my own life. To view my whole time here as a student 2.0, I would have to say it in a lingo that many people here can understand, or may understand, or somewhat understand. It's like coming to Narnia for a second time and last time. Now that Aslan has taught me what he needed me to know, and now I'm ready to live my life away from Narnia. Um, I'm ready to know Aslan by his other name in the outside world. Thank you all so much this year for opening my heart. Um, before I have a complete emotional breakdown, <laughs> I'd like to introduce my brother in Christ, Kelly Elbers from, it says Lloyd here, but he's actually claiming Bruno now as a sanctuary. Thank you, Joseph. These past two years at St. Therese have been incredible. The best years of my life, I am truly not afraid to say that. I've grown, stretched, and come to see in a new way. This year has been a profound encounter with faith, with trust, surrender, and God's grace. I'd experienced a lot of these things before, but unfortunately, internally I put limits on how much I thought I could grow in them. As I've grown over this year, I've come to see that only God knows how much you can grow in your faith, your trust, your love, and how much grace he has for each, every one of us, but especially for me. He's allowed me to have faith Faith like I couldn't believe. Faith to trust in God. I've encountered my poverty with my belief in God, and God has overcome my struggle through my surrender. He's worked in me in many numerous ways. Jerry sometimes calls this place a school of surrender, and I didn't understand that, and it bugged me that I didn't understand that. And this year, I came to see why. It was in the moment when I surrendered, when I didn't surrender for any reason, like I had to give something up, or I had, to, uh, I had something to gain from surrendering, but for surrendering for the fact of surrendering to God that he may have his way in his life, that I came to truly see why they call this a school of surrender. Part of the second year program was our independent study projects. Through putting over 300 hours into a project on the study of the family of Nazareth, which was my personal project, I was personally able to encounter, reflect, and live deeply the virtues that are embodied and shown and given to us through the Holy Family. I've come to see the ocean that is God, and I not only have dipped my toe into the water, but I have dived in. The water which seemed overwhelming at first, which seemed overwhelming at first is an ocean of mercy which has broken through my hard head and hard heart. As I experience this love, I have come to a place where I can love and be loved. My life has been completely changed, and I have encountered God. He is the only one I need, but I have, but having a community to accept me, know me, and love me has been one of the greatest blessings of these past years. Through love, through the love of my brothers and sisters, I am able to know God's love and the love of my family and why he died on the cross for us. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce to you Claire Arsenal from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Well, I think I know how Jenea feels now. <laughs> There's no way that I could possibly describe what St. Therese has done to me this year. 
not the saint, but the school and the people. <laughs> when I first came here, I was broken and I was hurt. And I didn't understand that. But this year has taught me that there's still hope in my life. And I have 30 people behind me who've loved me and who've helped me grow. And now, as I'm having an emotional breakdown, <laughs> I can see that God has changed me in so many ways and has blessed me in so many ways. I've grown so much in my relationship with my family, with my friends, and there's a saying that says, strangers, something, it's on my testimony that I'm not reading. Um, <laughs> I'll get to that. Uh, uh. Saying that a stranger is just a friend you haven't met yet is all too true, and in fact, I would like to go further than this. The strangers I have met here in September are more than friends. They're a part of my family now, and I love each and every one of them more than I could have ever expected. St. Therese was challenging, and it was worth it. It seriously saved my life, and is one of the greatest blessings I have ever received. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I would now like to invite Danielle Bayangeon from uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. In this place, we are invited to open the doors of our hearts to the Lord of love. And in this community, we have known each other, right down to who takes water with their meal and who doesn't. <laughs> That's me. Um, we have accepted each other, we have given generously of ourselves, and we have received in abundance. We have forgiven, and we have blessed. In this way, the community offers a glimpse of the God who knows us completely, who has given life so that we, we may receive life, who has forgiven and blessed us eternally. We have opened our hearts to the Lord of love by opening our hearts to one another. This little way of life, a life that as you have heard, is demanding and challenging, yet rewarding and fruitful, and has been a conduit of grace and healing. In a multitude of very little hidden ways, we have touched the folly of the cross, which is God's wisdom, so as to know the peace and joy of a broken heart made new. Here we have received the courage to proclaim the gospel with our lives. This year for me has been a journey from anxiety and numbness to freedom and peace and living deeply and authentically. I am eternally grateful and profoundly humbled to be standing among the students and staff of St. Therese who, who have allowed me to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And I bless them for the foundation on which I will continue to build my life. Thank you. And I would like to call on Holly Beebe from Calgary, Alberta. St. Tris has changed my life. I have came here to find my faith and to love Jesus Christ more. Coming here has changed me into a new person. This place is an awesome community to be in. I love, I love it here and I wish I could come back again. Coming here has changed my life because it helps me to learn about myself and my faith. It has helped me to, be a com to communicate with people better than I did before. I, have myself, I can love myself as God has loved me and, tell, and to love others as I love myself. When I return home, I, can go to, I, I am going to continue to, to keep the little way and by praying every day and staying on the same trust path. I love this. I love St. Trust School of Faith Mission. It has taught me to serve others before myself and always put God first. 
And I would like to introduce Serge Brazil from Manitoba. <laughs> My year here at St. Therese has been a big blessing in my life. I was able to grow deeper in my faith and learn how to surrender myself to God. Surrendering was the biggest theme of my year. I knew that by surrendering myself to Christ, I would allow myself to be closer to Christ and it would allow me to do His will. Once I started to surrender, I have seen a big difference in my life. I've been more certain on the things that I believe God wants me to do, and I just know that by giving God all that I am, that He will reward me, and He has shown me that already many times. I've learned also this year that by being a good Catholic Christian, it involves carrying your cross, like Jania has said. Um, my time here at St. Therese has been an amazing time um, with lots of challenges, but through those challenges, and by staying faithful to God, I've grown much and have borne much, much fruit. I now look at the cross more as an opportunity to grow closer to Christ. Overall, my year here at St. Therese has been unbelievable, and I seriously would not switch this year for anything else. Thank you. And now I'd like to call up Desiree Dacuna from Mississauga, Ontario. My year at St. Therese has been such a blessing that words cannot describe. Without this year of learning, <clears throat> growing, and sacrifice, my life's journey would not be as fruitful. I have learned to become childlike again. This includes being humbled, which was not fun at the time, but absolutely necessary. Becoming childlike also included giving up control of my life and allowing Jesus to be my leader. That too was hard. However, I feel so much freer by letting go of taking control and allowing God to do what he does best. He is Father God, after all, and I am his daughter. All in all, this year has been filled with tears and laughter, confusion and peace, and I can say that Jesus is truly faithful and true. He has fulfilled his word of shalom in my life by bringing it to order and balance. Mother Mary, too, has held my hand, and she won't let it go because she knows that I need her and will always love her. Dear Saints, Therese staff, and my dear brothers and sisters and community, all of you, I love you all very much. May Jesus and Mary bless us and keep us as we journey through life until we reach our final destination, which is heaven. And now I'd like to introduce Sarah Beebe from Calgary, Alberta. Being at St. Trust School has helped me grow deeper in Christ and has changed the way I look at my life, my own life. I have learned who Jesus truly is and how he longs and desires to be with me. Jesus loves me and will never leave me or abandon me. I have grown closer to Jesus through my prayer life, through scriptures, and through journaling. Jesus speaks to me the most powerfully when I am in his presence of the Eucharist during adoration and in praise and worship. The main thing that I realized this year is that I am always loved. The, the community here has always there for me whenever I am struggling and whenever I needed a hug. I, realized, I really realized this with the women in, of this community, and they will always be there, be with me, because we are all called children of God. They will be in, they will be in my heart forever. Christ has um, taught me to, has been with me and drawn me closer to my sister Holly through this experience. And I would also would like to thank Jim Anderson because I wouldn't be standing up here if it wasn't for him drawing me closer to God. Thank you. And I would like to um, welcome up my brother, a brother of mine, Marty Hennessy from Legal, Alberta. Hello. 
Um, this year has been the hardest year of my life. <laughs> I've gone through many struggles that I thought would not, that I would not see the end of. But with every struggle came an even greater victory. The struggles were more times than not in the area of coming to terms with myself. God has shown me the man he wants me to become. And what has to go or be changed in order to become this man. It has not been an easy journey coming to terms with this change that has to happen. But it has been well worth it. Before coming to St. Therese, I was living a life based on desire with no direction. I can confidently say that I am now leaving with direction, purpose, and an amazing challenge to continue becoming the man God has invited me to become. I have been truly blessed to have been given the opportunity to get to know the students and staff here. You have all blessed me in so many ways, and I thank you for that. Next, I'd like to invite Elizabeth Doucette from Alfred, Ontario. <laughs> Psalm 83 verse 1 says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord God of hosts. St. Therese School of Faith and Mission is truly a dwelling place for the Lord God, and it has taught me that I too am ever in the presence of God. The last nine months have been filled with prayer, fellowship, retreats, and classes, and they have all affirmed the truth that I am a beloved daughter of God, a princess of the King. <coughs> This has brought me great joy. Father John Del Bay, in his book, I Believe in Love, says that we have to have more dancing in our spiritual lives, and thanks to the freedom that I have experienced in this place, there is more dancing in my life. I struggle with worrying about the future and regretting the past, but I have been reminded to live in this present moment and realize that I am a daughter of the King and Jesus wants nothing more than to carry me in his arms. Difficult as that is, I have been given the tools to persevere on this journey. I know that if I fall, he will catch me. If I cry, he will be there to cry with me. And if I laugh, he will laugh too. I know that the Lord delights in me as he delights in all of his children. And this truth has set me free. I would like to invite up Jane Oliphant from Calgary, Alberta. So my St. Therese family and the surrounding community here have an irreplaceable place in my heart. They have each individually challenged and encouraged me out of my shell. In their witness and love, they have been a unique image of God who is love himself. My time here has been a journey into the heart, revealing fears and lies about myself and recognizing old defense mechanisms that cause me to run and hide and to close up inside, which hurts both myself and others. Community life and studies have helped to reveal these, but primarily through the lives of the people around me and their witness, each of us growing and pilgrimaging deeper into the mystery of what it means to be fully human and fully alive. We have helped each other in discovering who we are and who God is. Our God is a God of life. And in his love, we are in turn enabled to love and be open to one another. This year, I have been called to accept my weaknesses and to open and to receive love and life. And by receiving, I also become a gift. It is love that opens me and sets me free. And in God, there is so much life, hope, help, forgiveness, and healing. He is ready and willing to provide me with his strength, strength and love I need. And I believe it's St. Irenaeus who says, God's greatest glory is man fully alive. And with that, I'd like to invite my sister, Anna Fox, from Calgary, Alberta. My year at St. Therese has blessed me so much more than I could have ever even begun to imagine. In fact, as St. Therese says, when I think of all the blessings that God has given me, it's all I can do to keep myself from crying a river of tears, tears of gratitude. And so it, was with, it is with a heart filled with deep gratitude that I stand before you this evening, 
with a heart that has journeyed and is just beginning to blossom. St. Therese is a very special place, a place where hearts learn to forgive and heal, grow stronger and center themselves on the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. He is my vine and I am a branch, learning to live and grow rooted in him, placing my life in his tender care. He is my strength, just as he was the strength of our patron saint, and still is. Here I have gone on a journey up a mountain, scattering little blossoms on the way, desiring to be planted firmly in our Lord. And as I continued on this journey, I began to learn, grow in, and live the little way of St. Therese, becoming little, yet strong, becoming that much more firmly rooted in Christ. It is on this journey that I have grown closer together with my brothers and sisters, and even more importantly, closer to our beloved Heavenly Father. One of my favorite analogies is that of a wagon wheel. We are the spokes on the wheel, and Jesus is at the center. As we work together with Christ at the center of our lives, the closer we grow to each other in his love, the closer we grow to him. Eventually, we are all one, resting in the arms of our Father. And so, from one growing little flower to many other flowers out there, each on their own journey, I would like to say God bless you ever so much and to encourage you to strive to continue on climbing that mountain where, yes, there will be challenges, but as well as vista views, and to cherish the blossoms that fall your way. God bless. And now I'd like to invite a dear sister of mine, um, Jocelyne Chartier from La Braquerie Manitoba. Being here at St. Therese has been a huge blessing in my life and answered, answers to prayers that I had been searching for. I learned how to bring healing in my life by holding the hands of Mary and Jesus, living the little way and doing the duty in the moment while still growing in my faith. All throughout, I have come to learn much about the discovery of who I am and the way God created me to be. And it has been a hard but great journey in my own heart and in building community. Before coming to St. Therese, I had experienced a bit of community at camps, but nothing like here. Coming here, I have come to see that as, as brothers and sisters, we're there to help one another on a journey through the year. I have treasured this in my heart, and it has helped me to come to see who I am. Um, and thank you. Now I'd like to and by Tara Hyatt from Yellowhead County, Alberta. Hello. <laughs> in coming here to St. Therese, I can say in confidence that my life has grown in the mercy of Christ. In my love of Lord of the Rings, I would like to quote for you a passage that has really helped me to cling on to as St. Peter said, the hope that is in me. Quote, it is dangerous business going out your door. You step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. Unquote. Jesus is the path beneath my feet, and in growing deeply in the way of life here at St. Therese has really shown me how to keep my feet Love is what keeps me firmly planted upon the pathway. As St. Therese put it, my vocation is love. To do small things with great love. Prior to coming here, I would constantly ask the question, what am I looking for? And at St. Therese School of Faith and Mission, I got my answer. Love. I'm looking for love. The love that is the person of Jesus Christ. He is love. It is, and it is in him that I am able to leave the comforts of my heart and dare to be something more. As St. Paul said, it is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Jesus loves us so much, no matter where we came from or what we have done. He loves us for who we are, regardless of our sin and shame. We are all children of God, unique and wonderful. Never be ashamed of yourself. You are beautiful. Each and every one of you, you are beautiful. Yes, the fears will arise and the darkness will draw near. And in the worry and chaos of dark, crescent shadows, cry out to Jesus. 
May the words, give me Jesus, resound in your hearts and echo forth from your lips. Fear has lost all power in the presence of Christ's love. Sadness has drowned in his abundant joy. In him, I can be satisfied in who I am, who I am, his friend, his joy, his beloved son. He is jealous for us. He loves us. He loves us like crazy. Thank you. Um, I would like to now introduce Jules Gaudin from White Court, Alberta. <laughs> That was very good French there, Terrell. <laughs> um, a big theme in my year here at St. Therese was learning how to stop doing and just be. I had to learn to be still, as it says in Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. Before coming here, I had been involved in active ministry for a couple years, and at the start of my time here, it was very difficult to let that go. I saw my worth in what I could do and what I had accomplished, rather than in who I was as God's daughter. I wanted to be doing something for God and the church, and here I had to lay down ministry and many other things that I was clinging to instead of clinging to God. Here I had to allow myself to be silent and still so that I could hear the voice of God. These past nine months, I have slowly discovered my identity as God's daughter by virtue of my baptism, and realized that simply coming to God with empty hands is beautiful. I had to learn to trust God with my heart, even though I wasn't proud of its cracks or what hid in some of its darkest corners. St. John Paul II said, We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us. This year, I've had to lay my life bare before God and experienced poverty in a way I had never known before, letting go of who I thought I was and letting God show me who I really am. A great deal of fruit is being born from this sacrifice. I find myself at the end of this year with a greater knowledge of who God is and of the rich beauty of our Catholic faith, of who I am as a daughter of God and as an individual, and of what my role is as a laywoman in the church and in the world. More than anything, I have come to know God's unconditional love for me in a deeper way. As I leave this place, I know that God will help me to keep living the little way, and I look forward to continuing my journey of growth, healing, and learning to love as Jesus loved. Thank you. I would now like to invite my brother in Christ, Cole Hergott, from Bruno, Saskatchewan. This past year has been quite the journey. I decided to give God a year of my life to sort things out as things just working out the way I had planned. This meant giving up everything I had worked for, or so I thought. Instead of losing everything, I learned that I actually had everything to gain. This year, I learned what true surrender is, what true femininity and masculinity look like in action. And I was involved in a community that loved me for who I am, not for what I do. By experiencing God's grace and mercy in this place, I was able to surrender everything to Him. I was able to let go of false expectations I had for myself, and that took all the pressure off. Through this year, Jesus showed me that He, that only He knows the plans He has for me. I just need to be patient and trust in Him. I learned that the little way is not just about dishes and toilets, but it is about your own heart. The little way of St. Therese can only be lived out in the world if it is understood in your own heart. Growing up here in Bruno, I never ever planned on going to this school, but my years best summed up by Peter's comment to Jesus at, at the Transfiguration, Lord, it is good for us to be here. I would now like to introduce Amanda Hertz from Okotoks, Alberta. Uh, yeah, this has been one of the hardest years of my life, <laughs> but definitely one of the most beautiful years of my life. I'm so thankful that God called me back for round two of Therese. Um, yeah, just because God knows me better than I know myself. He knows my heart. 
and he knew exactly what I needed and I found that here in my year at St. Therese, through all the struggles, through all the joys, through the community, through everything here. Um, yeah, it's been full of surprises my time here at Therese. Therese has taken me by the hand and led me deeper into the heart of God the Father than I ever could have imagined. And the one thing that I discover is that there's always more to discover. Not just about myself, but about God and about those who I just, there's always more to discover. And it's just been incredible. Uh, through that uh, continual discovery, I've received an incredible education um, that has blessed me in so many ways. And what's more is that I've been blessed with a once in a lifetime experience of faith and hope and love through the healing ministries of God in and through this place. And I've learned what it means to be feminine, what it means to be human, what it means to be me. And I've learned what it means to know of, to feel, and to receive the love of the Trinity in my life. And it hasn't been easy, it definitely hasn't. But it has been beautiful. I can't wait to share that, uh, that beautiful love of God with all that I meet. And uh, as I was reflecting on this, I was thinking, how can I do this? Um, ah. <laughs> and uh, just Mary came to mind, just striving to be like Mary in everything, striving to be like Mary. She waited on the Lord. She pondered all the things in her heart. She prayed constantly, trusted fully, and surrendered totally. And she gave a complete and total yes. And I'd like to introduce or welcome <laughs> up uh, my good friend Nazim Kotilda. <laughs> I practiced that so hard <laughs> from Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> Hello. My name is Nazim Katania. <laughs> My year here at St. Therese has been full of ups and downs, consolations and desolations. The process of coming to love one another through the eyes of God has been challenging and rewarding. It takes time, love, and effort. The St. Therese program designed around the way of beauty, the beauty of the little way, has taught me exactly this. The program did not just limit me to loving my brothers and sisters, but to love all things, especially the small things. Learning to live the little way of St. Therese has been a most beautiful journey, and since I have discovered the art of loving everything I do, everyone I meet, and the tiny tasks, from doing dishes, to picking up a little piece of confetti and throwing it in the garbage. Of course, this is only one aspect of living the little way of St. Therese here in Bruno. There is balance in work, play, and academics. Applying the little way to my chores and doing them a great love is one thing, but we always go deeper. Eventually, I discovered the little way does not just have to be applied to my chores and my actions, but it can also be applied in my academic life and in my recreational time. Correcting a grammatical error, for example, remembering to add that space before the next paragraph is all part of walking with St. Therese. And in times of recreation, putting my everything into what I am doing is essential. If I am playing a board game with my brothers and sisters, then I do so with the gusto and the love of St. Therese. Being fully present to my brothers and sisters and having fun with them with my whole self, body, mind, and heart. Or if I am playing a basketball game, I am there fully, I learned not to let my mind wander far off into the distant land of dinner or what assignment I have next. Instead, I play like that, last basketball, like that basketball game is my last. This is the little way of St. Therese that I've learned to walk. It is not easy, but it has taught me to find beauty in things that I never knew existed. I have learned to love Jesus in all things, to see through the eyes of Jesus in the small things, and to know that even I can change the world just by doing small things with love. And now, I would like to introduce my brother in Christ, Gregory Schistel, from Park Hill, Ontario. Now, quite simply, what the past two years for me has been would be finding God and falling in love with Him. I see now that falling in love changes everything. It affects everything and decides everything. But this year I learned that falling in love brings a realization of my own inadequacy to do and be what I would be for my beloved. There is a powerlessness in me to ever give myself adequately to love. I realize that the more God draws me, the more I feel 
the insufficiency of my love and gratitude. There is not enough time in a life to love God as he deserves. But an impossible task can only be carried out through humility. By understanding my own weakness and trusting in the grace that he provides, this is the only way. This year at St. Therese, I rediscovered God. And he taught me how to feel again. He taught me how to dream in him and how to love him back by joining in the great song, the great song of salvation. So with my limited time and insufficient words, the only thing that I have left to say and the only thing that I can say that would suffice would be thank you. Thank you to the team here at St. Therese and thank you for this place and this community, these 30 wonderful people behind me, thank you for giving me a safe place to fall in love with my beloved. There is, there is really nothing else to say. So, um, last but most certainly not least, Rebecca Albers from Lloyd Minister. This year at St. Therese has been a great blessing for me in so many ways. Through the love in this place and from these people behind me, I have come to love them and everyone else and accept the love that they offer me. For most of my life, I have believed many lies about myself. During this year, I have made an attempt to leave the lies behind and enter into the truth. This has led to me opening up my life to others and taking the time to share with them what is happening in my life. Over this year, I have seen the big things as important and have missed out on doing the little things. I realized that I had my priorities backwards and that I was supposed to be striving to do the little things and do them with a loving heart. Over the year, I have come to see the beauty of doing the little things out of love for my brothers and sisters. One of the other things that has been important to me is learning to face my fears rather than running away from them. This has allowed me to see the need to live in the present moment and do what is in front of me, rather than focusing on what will be coming next in my life. I have been blessed to walk with my brothers and sisters as a community this year. There has been a sisterhood that has developed and has been very close to my heart because I never had sisters before now, and now I have 18 of them. <laughs> Over this year, I have changed in so many ways, and I have been able to discover my identity who I am in God's eyes as his child. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Jim to come back up. It's my very great pleasure, honor, and indeed delight to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, the St. Therese School of Faith and Mission class of 2014. <laughs> I'm sure all of you uh, have realized due to these beautiful testimonies um, that the love and community and grace of God that flows into this place uh, would not have happened without the support, uh, love, time and care of the, of the staff here at St. Therese. Uh, they've been a tremendous influence um, and grace to us this year, so we would like to offer thanks to, um, to all the staff and teachers uh, who have helped us this year. We've already introduced you to Jim, our Director of Formation. We would now like to thank our Assistant Director, Dr. Robert Stackpole. Uh, and one more thing, um, just as we did with the students, we'll introduce all the teachers. Um, they can stand and we will give the applause then. So Robert Stackville gives himself wholeheartedly to our community 
in many ways. This is his second year at St. Therese, and he has been a key instrument in the development of the second year program. Not only does he teach some of the first year and second year classes, but he is also a, past a pastoral advisor to me and some of the other men. I have grown significantly this year due to the mentorship and wisdom of Robert. If he can't be found in his office, you will surely be able to find him with a knock on the door of his bell tower suite, where he lives with his cat Mimo. <laughs> Robert's good humor and sincere heart has blessed us all greatly. Always open to questions, Robert will follow up with a complete answer, whether he gets it from his big brain or his massive book collection. <laughs> Robert's passion, extensive knowledge, and borderline obsession for divine mercy permeates all aspects of his life. <laughs> this flows into the life of his students as well, um, through his own mercy, something we are particularly thankful for when it comes to homework. <laughs> Robert, your love and commitment to this community is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Next, we'd really like to give out a thank you to Lisa Anderson. She is the wife of the Director of Formation and a mother of three. Not only does she care for her own children, but she also cares for all of us. This year, she has been involved in the community as a pastoral advisor, church history instructor, and she has led the holistic sexuality classes for the women. Her love and dedication to the students, as expressed especially through her careful and thoughtful formation of the Time with Therese retreats, has been a source of life for each of us throughout the year. You can always count on Lisa for a vibrant smile and a cheerful attitude. Thank you, Lisa, for all that you've done. Next, we would like to thank Donna Christian. Aside from being Jerry's wife, she doubles as the director of the Healing and Growth Center and is heavily involved in running the Triumph program with Jerry. She also has an active role in the student community as a pastoral advisor, conference instructor, and offering prayer ministry. Her gentle, loving presence has been an inspiring gift as part of our St. Therese family. Thank you, Donna. Michelle Hergott has been a very active very, been very active in our community this year as a pastoral advisor and as the instructor for the Called and Gifted Charisms Workshop. She has successfully completed her second year classes in order to stay ahead of her son Cole, <laughs> one of the freshly commissioned first years. Her unique talents and gifts have been a tremendous blessing for all of us. Thank you, Michelle. Father Gerard Cooper made his teaching career debut this year, instructing contemporary history, contemporary church history in the second year classroom. Every, every Friday he would drive out from Saskatoon to start our day with Mass before classes. The passion he has for his vocation is evident in his teaching and interaction with the students. His lived witness of the faith has been ex an example to us throughout the year. Thank you, Father Gerard. We'd also like to thank every other priest who has donated their time throughout the year. Thank you, Father Ivan, for leading the Icon Writing Retreat, for celebrating Divine Liturgy, and for all of your instruction. A big thanks also goes out to Father Jeffrey Stefaniuk uh, for also celebrating Divine Liturgy and for donating numerous copies of the Word Among Us. Thanks to Father Ephraim, who was here earlier, uh, who was our chaplain during Divine Mercy Conference, as well as Father Jeff Young, who also joined us for the Divine Mercy Conference and for the Theology of the Body Conference. Father Jeff Young will be joining us again next year as an instructor for the new second year philosophy class. Thank you to all the other priests and to these ones who have all joined us this year and have been played such a huge role in our formation.
Jerome Weiler is the morality instructor for the first years. He bravely dedicated his time to forming our consciences and facilitating moral debate. Every Wednesday, he risked his life driving along icy Saskatchewan highways from Saskatoon to Bruno. Jerome has been an incredible witness through the many sharings of his lived experience, especially the stories of his amazing son. Thank you, Jerome, for the love, patience, and perseverance you put into teaching our class. Next, we'd like to thank the marvelous staff of St. Therese. Vicki Serblowski is the school's administrator. Her beautiful and gentle spirit is always ready to share a smile when we pass by her office. We would like to thank her for the numerous hours she spent chasing us down for our money. <laughs> One of our favorite times spent with Vicki was the amazing winter snow day generously hosted at the Serblowski farm. Thank you, Vicki, for your presence and your willingness to always lend a helping hand. Carolyn Crittenden is our secretary and events coordinator. When she is not in the office, she dedicates her time to prayer ministry with her friend Gail Garo. She is also a pastoral advisor and a member of the Triumph team. Her encouragement and understanding nature makes everyone feel, feel cared for. Thank you, Carolyn, for your gen generosity and hospitality. James Riley is in charge of media production and broadcast. He does everything from web design and promotion material to photoshopping our heads in and out of pictures. <laughs> he lives in Bruno with his wife Heidi and five kids who join us every Friday for grilled cheese sandwiches. James is always around working hard, sharing his good humor and witty jokes. Thank you, James. Chris O'Hara is an alumnus of St. Therese who has returned this year working as the coordinator of program promotion. The men and women of the community are grateful to have Chris around, not only because of his subscription to the Hockey News magazine, but also because of his fun personality, especially evident in his love of board games. Thank you, Chris, for your time and example. Frank and Kathy McGarrigal. One title is not enough to describe what Frank and Kathy do around here for both the students and the building. Maintenance and mentorship are just a couple of the things they do to fill in the gaps. Kathy is a pastoral advisor and peaceful presence among us. Frank never fails in entertaining us with one of his adventure stories <laughs> and will always sit down to share a cup of coffee. Though often unseen, their love and humble service is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Frank and Kathy. Glenn and Mary Lehman are the parents of Lisa Anderson and serve as integral members of our community. Glenn and Mary are the grandparents of Stephen Anderson and honorary grandparents to us all. Mary takes care of us through her role as pastoral advisor and through her nursing help from her background as an x-ray technician. They support us daily through their prayer, especially in joining us for mass and adoration. Thank you, Glenn and Mary, for your attentive care. As many of you know, St. Therese hosts our annual Springtime of the Faith conferences in the third trimester. We'd like to give a quick thank you to all of our presenters, who are not all here to join us, including John O'Brien, Father Dennis Lemieux, the Miriam sisters Stephanie Melanie and Jean Viev, Father Hans Sue Park, Father Terry Donahue, Christopher West, Dr. Peter Fitch, um, Bishop Don Bolin, Father Scott McKegg, and our other guest presenters, Leah Perot, Bishop Albert Teveno, visitors from Marion Center in Regina, and Nicole Moreau with Net Ministries.
Finally, we would like to acknowledge the Board of Directors. If you could please stand and be recognized as we call your name. Jerry Christian, Chairman of the Board, Darlene Kni, Father Jeffrey Stefaniak, Carolyn Crittenden, Gail Garreau, Victor Granger, Lisa Anderson, Sheila Grant, and Brian Hergott. <laughs> We would now like to invite up Robert Stackpole to lead us in closing prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, through St. Therese of the Child Jesus, you desire to remind the world of the merciful love that fills your heart and the childlike trust that we can have in you. Through her, you recall the whole world to the teachings of Jesus, your sin, that unless we become like little children, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, grant us, we pray, childlike hearts, totally surrendered in love and trust to the heart of Jesus, our Savior, walking the little way of spiritual childhood from this day forward. May we bear the light of Christ's merciful love wherever he calls us to go. And then at our journey's end, may we all be reunited in that heavenly kingdom where with St. Therese, the little flower, we shall pray, praise and glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lady Seat of Wisdom. Pray Good Saint Therese. Pray In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for this wonderful evening of celebration. We hope you all enjoyed the meal, the company, and this evening's program. Coming up, we will be having some music and dancing. For anyone who wishes to help, we will begin setting up for this in about 10 minutes. We will leave tables set up at the back by the coffee and refreshments, and we'll put away these tables at the front to make room for a dance floor. Then at 11 o'clock, we'll be pulling out a cold cut lunch for all of your snacking needs. <laughs> Please feel free to stand up and stretch and help yourself to coffee and refreshments at the back. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>